Okay, we're starting. Now, what we're going to be doing today is talking about Bronsted Lowry, B R O N S T E D Lowry, L O W R Y. Okay, and this is going to be on their theory of acids and bases. And the best way I know of to introduce Bronsted Lowry base acid base concept is to start you out first of all with something that will look exceptionally strange to you but just get this down if you need to come back and watch over and over again until this sits in your mind okay but we're going to have water doing what they call self ionization this isn't actually self ionization but it is a transfer back and forth between two water molecules. Now, with Brunsted-Lowry, we have acids and bases, but not the way you normally think of them. This guy is going to be an acid, and this guy is going to be a base. And according to Brunsted-Lowry, an acid is a proton donor. And what is a proton but just a poor little hydrogen that lost his electron? This electron has gone astray. Poor thing. Okay. And a base is a proton acceptor. So, let's test that out on this guy. Here we go. Acid is going to become a... Whoops, conjugate base, not there, he's going over here. The acid becomes a conjugate base because an acid is a proton donor. So, look at this guy, try to imagine him with one less hydrogen, and what do you get? This. Okay, sometimes it's handy to write water as H-O-H because that is a more accurate way to really represent water. Okay, So, this guy becomes what's called the conjugate base, and this guy is going to become the conjugate acid. Conjugate acid. And the conjugate acid is the one who is the um, base with an extra proton because he accepted the proton. Now this whole business of conjugates will make sense if we look at this backwards. Do you notice this is a two-way arrow? These are reactants, these are products for this arrow. But for this arrow, these are reactants and these are products. Now let's write it backwards and you're going to see how we identify conjugates from regulars. Now go back and forth. And now we're going to have water and water over here. And now this being the acid is going to be a proton donor. And this is the conjugate base. This guy is going to be the acceptor, and he becomes, wait a second, this acid, this is the conjugate base, this guy is the base, and here's his conjugate acid. Yeah, okay, that works. Here's the conjugate acid. And now you can see exactly how this guy works, and I would, oh, base, let's call this guy the base. Now, who can tell me? Why do we call this guy an acid here, but we call exactly the same species, is the way they call these guys, species, big, fancy name. Ooh, that's supposed to scare you off. Don't be scared. <laughs> All right, so why do we call them, this guy's a conjugate acid, this guy's an acid. Can anybody see what the common thing is to be a conjugate? Yes. He has to be a product. Yes. 
Conjugates are always on the product side. Acids and bases are always on the left side in the uh, Bronsted Lowry acid base concept. Hopefully, this will give you some idea of how things work. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Don't turn it off yet. We're not done. I have another example to give to you that will help you set this concept in your mind. I know you heard the bell and all that, but we're not done. So, ammonia. Let's look at ammonia and see what ammonia does in water. Ammonia in water is kind of a neat deal because every other concept of acid and base doesn't know how to call ammonia an acid or a base because or don't know why it should be called a base in the first place. But when we put it in water, it always forms a base. So ammonia, the gas, this is really the gas because when he gets into water, which is the liquid state, he is going to get himself an extra hydrogen atom or an extra proton and he goes positive. And then the water, see, now this guy became a base, B-A-S-E. And now this dude, the water, is the acid, as we saw before in the last equation. Water is both an acid and a base, depending on which way he goes, which way the molecule goes. And when we have this situation where something can be an acid or a base, we call that amphoteric. A-M-P-H-O-T-E-R-I-C. Now, let's go back to ammonia, and let's look and see how this works. We've got ammonium, the ion, and when this guy loses the proton to the ammonia, he winds up being just a poor little hydroxide ion. So here is our base, and our conjugate acid is right there, because this is the base, after he accepts the proton, is going to be a conjugate acid. And this guy over here started out as the acid, and he became a conjugate base. Okay, so now we see that ammonia actually is a base whenever it gets into water. And this, these two guys would rather not be this way. And so this arrow right here is very small. And this arrow is going to be very large. So if I were to write this more correctly, this would look something like this. A little tiny arrow that way and a big arrow that way, which is why when you use ammonia cleaner, your nose gets a good dose of this stuff. And when this stuff hits your nose, it gets into the liquid in your nose, and it forms this stuff, which is a strong base, which is a pretty healthy base. And your nose doesn't like that. So now you've seen with with these two examples how the Brunsted-Lowry acid base is thought of, and how to predict it when you get a particular question about it. Now we are done. Thank you for watching.